Hello everyone, welcome back. I thought I was gonna stop after I finished all the technical challenges from the 2020 season, but I just had a lot of fun with each one. I learned so many things that inspired me to create other recipes, and it was just a good creative outlet. So I'm just gonna keep going while I'm having fun with it, see where it takes me. And I'm starting off with the first technical challenge from the 2019 season. This is Prue's Angel Cake Slices. Now this recipe is rated as challenging, which is a little bit bold for the first episode, but we'll see how it goes. I have the recipe right here. This has been updated for American audiences, but I much prefer to measure ingredients in grams. So I'm gonna be referring to the gram measurements from the British version. I feel like they kind of dumbed it down for American audiences. You should always measure with grams. All you need is a scale like this. It's about 10 bucks. Um, it's just much more precise. If you ever see a recipe that says like half a cup plus two tablespoons, that's because the recipe was originally in grams and it's hard to convert it to cup measurements. So moral of the story, use grams. And now I'm gonna get started with baking. I've prepped most of the ingredients here because that's not really fun to watch. The hardest part of this was I had to, I need to divide the pan into three because this is gonna be a, a cake with three different color layers, a little cake bar type thing. Um, I just wanna make sure that I've, these are equal. This has been a whole parchment paper journey. I think I have something that should work. Now it's time to make the sponge. So I need the eggs and sugar over a pan of gently simmering water. Uh-oh, I don't have a double boiler. So this is coming off the heat and now I am supposed to weigh it and record the weight. Whisk until thick and moose-like. Doesn't say what speed or how long. So now I, need, I divided the flour already into three bowls. I need to do the same with the butter. So I have butter that has been melted and cooled. I'm gonna divide it between these bowls. All right, so I have my three bowls of flour, my three bowls of butter, melted butter. Vanilla goes in one. Raspberry flavoring, which I don't have, goes into another, but I do have strawberry flavoring for some reason. I don't even know why I have that. And a small drop of pink food coloring. And then the lemon zest and a small drop of yellow food coloring into the next. Kind of neutral colored vanilla mixture. The raspberry, but today strawberry mixture and then the lemon mixture. Divide the whisk egg mixture into three bowls. I need three more bowls. How many bowls do they think I have? These three, these three, and now I need three new bowls. That is not ideal. Do they think this is like a commercial kitchen? The egg mixture needs to evenly go between these. Oh no, the butter's starting to harden. Ugh, too slow. Working with one bowl of egg flour and butter at a time, sift the flour over the egg and gently fold in. This is a very hard recipe. Work quickly to prevent this from collapsing. I think it collapsed. Oh no. This is pretty fast paced and kind of a stressful recipe. It was supposed to not collapse. It's gonna be great. I am kind of bummed because I definitely like didn't fold the stuff fast enough. Ugh, I wish you could see how sad looking this is. Here it goes, 12 to 15 minutes. I am back. This is out of the oven after what might be a fail, but I suppose you can learn from everything. I don't know if you can see this. Like it definitely turned into cake, but it's supposed to be way taller. If I was on the show, 
I don't know. I may have gotten kicked out in week one. Thankfully, I'm not. I'm just messing around. Um, now I have to make Italian meringue buttercream, which I've never made. What could go wrong? About to find out. Melt the sugar in three tablespoons of water very gently in a pot over low heat. So the British version of this recipe says to use large eggs and the American version says to use extra large eggs. So the egg whites are just about at soft peaks. This is supposed to boil. All right, this needs to be stiff and glossy. Oh no, the sugar's like hardened. So to add the butter gradually. Wow, this is gonna be very hard to clean. Guys, I don't know about Italian meringue buttercream. I may have totally screwed this up. <laughs> you guys, it's not smooth. It's neither smooth nor thick. And I honestly don't even know if you can eat egg whites. Like, it tastes good though. Someone please inform me if this is safe to eat. I was actually really excited to give these to the people in our building downstairs who work at the front desk. Um, definitely not gonna do that. I don't even know if I wanna eat it. I'm gonna put it into my last clean bowl. And then I'm supposed to chill it. You know, I've always been curious about Italian meringue buttercream. Does whipping the egg whites make it safe to eat? Ask me how I feel in a few hours. Trim the sponges so they are identical in size and height. I mean, they're identical in height, only in that they have no height. So I'll trim the edges off. Not gonna lie, it tastes a little bit like scrambled eggs. It doesn't taste awful, but also, it doesn't taste that good. While the Italian meringue buttercream is chilling, I'm gonna make the fondant icing. So I need to add one and a half tablespoons of water to some powdered sugar. <laughs> this isn't even working, literally two ingredients. Look at this, ugh. Probably should use a hand mixer for this. Now I'm supposed to take a fourth of it, put it in a bowl. I'm just gonna eyeball a fourth of it, losing my steam. And then dye it pink. This goes in this piping bag, which I feel like I prepped weeks ago. It's now time for the assembly. I'm really hoping that this Italian meringue has thickened no, it hasn't really. Spread half the buttercream over the vanilla sponge. I am putting some Italian meringue buttercream on this. I think it's supposed to be way thicker. Top with the raspberry sponge. Spread the white fondant over the top of the lemon sponge. Uh-oh. You guys, this is, this is not going well. Now I'm supposed to pipe fine lines of icing across the width And then now, just take a toothpick, gently drag in opposite directions. I think I did this wrong. This was supposed to be, yep, I did it wrong. It was supposed to go that way because then, I don't know. 
I don't like this recipe anymore. I'm done. Six even slices and serve. Oh no. Okay. It doesn't look bad, that bad inside. It's something. Not awful. I have something to show for this. All right, so here we are, back with the unmistakably awesome dress sense, and uh, we're here to do the tasting of the angel cake. Yeah, I remember having these when I was really little, and not so little as well. They cut really well. They look, they look very nice. I'm going to take a whole big piece of one. Well, I'm sure Paul Hollywood would have something to say because he always does. But I think they're pretty good. I think they're a little drier than, like not as soft as they could be, but they're pretty good. Very tasty. Um, and if someone served these, at a dinner party or a afternoon tea, um, I think they'd go down really well. I'm gonna taste one more piece. I think a very good effort for the first time making these because it's a very tough thing to do. So, gets my vote. I think you can learn something from every fail. So, I learned a bunch of stuff here. I have something to show for it. If you like this video and want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.